Welcome to our lecture online. Given the following circuit, we're supposed to find the transfer function, in this particular case, the transfer function of the output voltage or the input voltage over the input current. Hmm. We need to keep in mind that the reactance for the inductor is J omega L and the reactance for the capacitor is 1 over J omega C. And then, of course, the conversion from S equals J omega. But here we have a simple circuit. We have impedance 1 through this, uh, through this line here and impedance through to that line right there. And so keeping, keeping in mind Ohm's law, we could do the following. We know that the current through any circuit is equal to the ratio of the voltage divided by the resistance, or in this case, the impedance, which means that the impedance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. In other words, in this example right here, the transfer function we're looking for is equal to the impedance of the circuit as a function of the frequency omega. So all we have to do is find the impedance and then use the conversion from S equals J omega to find the transfer function which will then give us the poles and the zeros. So let's go ahead and try that. So we know that the total impedance is going to be equal to the product over the sum because we have two branches in parallel right here. All right, so impedance one. Z1 is going to be the, uh, the resistance plus the capacitance, and of course we're going to use that. So Z is equal to, that would be 10 plus 1 over J omega C, J omega. Now C is going to be 50 millifarads, which is uh, times 0 0.05. All right. Impedance 2 is going to be 6 plus J omega L, and L is going to be, in this case, 2 Henry's. And the whole thing divided by the sum of the two, which is 10 plus 1 over 0. Point, I'll put the J first, J times 0 0.05 times omega, plus 6, and plus J2 omega, like that. All right. Now, what should we do? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by J omega times 0 0.05 because that way I can get rid of that. So multiply the top and the bottom, and let me use a different color, times J 0 0.05 omega times J 0 0.05 omega. Let's do that for both the top and the bottom to see what would happen. And I think things may look a little bit better here. So the impedance, which eventually is going to be the transfer function, is going to be equal to 10 times this, which is J times, uh, let's see here, 0 0.5 omega, plus multiply this times this, I get 1. And then I multiply this times what I have left here, which is 6 plus J 2 omega. In the denominator, I'm going to multiply this, of course, times every one of the terms. So here I get j times 10 times this is 0 0.5 omega. This times this I get plus 1. That times this I get plus 6 times that. That would be a j times 0 0.3 omega. And this times this, I get 2 times that. That would be plus 0 0.1 and I'm going to write as j squared omega squared. All right. Now notice I can combine these two, plus I can already convert j omega to s. That makes things a little bit easier for the denominator. So let me go up here. And in the numerator, what do we have here? OK. I'm going to multiply this by 2. And I'm going to divide this by 2. So essentially what I'm doing with the numerator is this. I'm going to multiply the numerator by 2 because that way I get 1 j omega plus 2. And then over here I'm going to divide by 2 because I want 1 j omega. That makes things easier. And of course since I'm multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2 at the same time, I'm not changing anything at all. And then here I'm going to multiply everything by 10 
because that way I get rid of the decimal places and the point 0.1 will then become a 1. And of course, if I multiply the denominator by 10, I must multiply the numerator by 10 as well. All right, so a few adjustments here to make things look a little bit better. So first of all, multiply this by 2, I get uh, 1 j omega plus 2. Now I'm going to multiply that times, divide this by 2, I get 1 j omega plus 3 in the numerator, all divided by, oh, I still have a 10 here, so I can't forget the 10, I'll put the 10 in the front, and then here I'll get 1 times 10 is 10, plus 0.5 plus 0.3, that's 0.8, but times 10 that would be 8 j omega, and then finally I have 10 times this, which gives me, oh, I forgot a square here, it's j squared omega squared, and 10 times that would give, would give me plus 1 times j squared omega squared. There, that's better. Put an equal sign in front. Now I'm making the conversion where s equals j omega. When I do that, I get the following. So this is equal to 10 times s plus 2 times s plus 3, which gives me the zeros in the numerator, divided by, this would be s squared, plus 8 times s, plus 10, which will give me the poles in the denominator. And so this, since this is equal to z, that becomes then the transfer function h of omega. And that is what we were looking for. Now obviously the zeros can easily be found. So we have zeros at 2 and 3, and we have poles at and I don't think we can factor this, because that's 2 times 5, so I won't factor, but we can say that s is equal to minus 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a, 2 times 1. So in other words, s is equal to um, minus 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 40, which is 24, divided by 2. And so let's see what the two poles are going to be in this case. Take the 24, take the square root of that. And if I take the plus of that, so that's minus 8, divide by 2 equals, that gives me minus 1.505. So that will be equal to minus 1 point, And of course, <coughs> the, the pole will be on the other side of the vertical axis. That would be 1.505. 505505, oh, five, oh, five. well, minus, or, I'll take care of that later, or, um, if I take 24, take the square root of that, make that minus, minus 8 equals, divided by 2 equals, that would be, or minus 6.449, 449. So here I have the two poles, two poles, whoop, there we go, and the two zeros, of course, again, I can say minus 2, minus 3, but then if I actually put that onto the uh, Bode's plot or onto the frequency plot, those become positive numbers, and we'll show you in the next example how that works. But at least that's how we find the transfer function, and we find the zeros, and we find the poles. And that is how it's done.